Qualifying has just finished for the 2018 German Grand Prix at Hockenheim. You've gone back to your hotel. You have started in P1. Your championship rival, Lewis Hamilton, was eliminated in Q2 with hydraulic issues and will start in P14 tomorrow. As I mentioned, you are on pole position for your home event. You are in the Scarlet Red Ferrari, a really fast car from the Skid area, and you are leading in the World Championship by six points. You are going for your fifth World Championship. You're fifth in two teams. You're going for two different teams with a World Championship, and it's basically all coming up Sebastian Vettel or your way um fast forward a handful of laps and yeah that's it a few bits of rain have really ruined your not just race not just season but just everything or less like what people think anyways Sebastian Vettel leaves Germany 2018 17 points down from Lewis Hamilton your British rival has taken the lead of the world championship as he wins your home race from p14 you start in p1 you leave for most of the race and you retire in what can only be seen from put the public from our perspective as a very stupid rookie and basically a, a mistake that a four-time world champion does not make um, so this is the F1 Debate Show, guys, and we're going to be talking ahead of the 2019 German Grand Prix about the home guy, the Weltmeister, the man who basically dominated the early 2010s with that Red Bull car. He won four World Championships, he has one victory to his name from the German Grand Prix at the Nürburgring in 2013, but yet to win at Hockenheim, a place that he actually grew up. 30 kilometers away in a town called Heppenheim, that's where Sebastian was born. And we're going to be talking about did the 2018 incident, which, um, if you weren't there, if you didn't see it, um, let me just recap kind of quickly. So, Sebastian Vettel, as I say, leading his home Grand Prix in Germany, he was leading with Lewis Hamilton in the uh, in, in the championship in the drivers' championship. Um, it was really looking good for Sebastian Vettel. The heavens turned from um, dry to wet. Again, no problem for him. He kind of got this in the bag. Um, the lead changes from Bottas to Raikkonen. But yeah, as I say, started on pole. Really no problem for Sebastian. Uh, he goes into the Saks Curve, Sector 3, which I think is turn 14. Basically, a bit of aquaplaning, a bit of oval steer from the rear wheels as they just can't really adapt to the changing uh, uh, surface of the track. And basically, he spins out into the gravel right in front of the Mercedes grandstand, right in front of what can only be described on the pitches as mainly British and Mercedes fans. And then, yes, Sebastian Vettel swearing on the radio, hitting a steering wheel, gets out of the car with his head held so low, almost as low as we felt after British week. Even, probably even lower than that, actually. Mm. Um, yeah, basically, that was... that was just a really terrible scene for Sebastian Vettel, for Ferrari fans, and yes, as I just said there, you know, he went, he came into the German Grand Prix with the lead, he came out of it losing by, to be honest, almost a race victory, almost second place, he's almost, Lewis Hamilton was second place, points, 17 points ahead of Sebastian going into the second part of the season in 2018. So anyway, why are we talking about 2018, you might be asking? So basically since then, he's made a handful of errors, he did lose a world championship, uh, he did lose the World Championship to Lewis Hamilton, who picked up his fifth consecutive World Championship at the 2016 Mexico, um, uh, 2018 Mexican Grand Prix. Did I just say 16 there? I meant 18. Um, and then he has made a few errors this year. Roll on 12 months, and we are back at Hockenheim in 2019. And Sebastian Vettel, like I said in the preview show, has everything to get in this weekend. He's got everything to lose. But what he has to gain is basically to rectify, to have a redemption of actually what happened last year. His crash, his kind of let down, his embarrassment in front of the German people. And the moment that we are going to be discussing, did it ruin Sebastian Vettel's psyche? Has this kind of ruined his Ferrari, you know, I don't know, push? Has this just ruined his Ferrari career so far? And is this kind of a, a very early exit sign? for Sebastian Vettel. Now, as I say, he goes into his, his home race. He has one victory that he picked up in the Nürbe, at the uh, Formula 1 Nürburgring for the 2013 German Grand Prix with Red Bull, but he's yet to win at the Hockenheim Ring. He was on set to win last year with Ferrari before he made that error. Now, a lot of people after the crash were pointing fingers at Ferrari, saying that they should have got the strategy right. They were also looking at uh, just basically just a normal racing incident, but a lot of people were looking at Sebastian Vettel, the driver, uh, you know, the man who who, as I say, he had everything at Red Bull, but then kind of made this very stupid mistake. A mistake that, as I say, you know, anybody else, it looked like even Marcus Ericsson could have really avoided that on the um, on the, on the track. If you actually look at the onboard footage, it actually doesn't look like a pretty like it doesn't look like a spectacular kind of crash. 
going in the corner, a little bit of overstay, and then that's it. But it does show in Formula 1 that that's enough to just let you go off. So basically where is Sebastian Vettel, you know, has he ruined uh, his psyche? And I'm just going to kick this off and I'm going to say I think that this has really had a big toll on Sebastian. Um, in terms of popularity, of course, Lewis Hamilton is the victor. He takes a lot more popularity from Sebastian Vettel. We have already established in previous videos that Lewis Hamilton is a stronger driver than Sebastian. Um, they are very level pegging on terms of experience. Lewis Hamilton was in Formula One. Uh, sorry, they came into Formula One in the very same year. Lewis Hamilton started in 2007 with McLaren. Um, Sebastian started with BMW Sauber in 2000, both in 2007. But Lewis has, of course, got one more world championship than Seb loads more pole positions and loads more race wins he is a much skilled better driver on the track and to be honest we don't think that he would have made that error in that race um sebastian vettel what a lot of people have been saying and what we said in the video a few weeks ago that he hasn't really adapted to life at ferrari and i said also in the preview that he really should have stayed at red bull or well we'll take that with a bit of pinch of salt but i don't think ferrari was the dream move that we all thought of um basically um all the all the incidents that happened afterwards like the spinning in mexico sorry spinning in us spinning in japan uh the collision with max in brazil in uh, britain this year the spinning in bahrain uh the collision with lewis in italy all of the and the spinning in paul ricard this, the, all of these things are bad and rookie errors and basically things that he should not be really doing and i don't want to say that this has really affected him to the point where he's just given up on formula one but i do believe that this has really taken an effect a toll on him he must have been thinking that you know formula one is just there's really nothing about this anymore there's nothing that you know i've got no skill i've got nothing left and he will have lost a lot of fans in that day he would have lost a lot of respect and reputation and to be honest i would have actually been there i, I was kind of there as well to think sebi's that's not the way a four-time world champion would have gone on. So just to come straight out of the bat, I'm going to say that, yes, it did take an effect on him. And has he got every, Has he got to kind of win this race? Well, I don't really know yet. We'll get into that in a bit more detail later on in the episode. But I do think that 2018 did affect him. Uh, so, Jordan, bringing you into the episode, um, Sebastian Vettel, you were there. You, you weren't there, but you no, saw no. it. Um, <laughs> it was a very big moment from, as, as you just said there, you know, a crash that really wasn't very much. Um, mm. Do you think that this has affected Sebastian Vettel? Affected him in the way that he it has stuck on his mind, mm -hmm. basically through twenty eighteen. And, and, and do you think it's something that he will kind of look back and say to define a moment that he kind of embarrassed himself and let down the team? Well, it was a very embarrassing moment at the time, and definitely would have affected him psychologically that season. You know, with, you know, as I say, leading the race. Winning the world championship so far, he's doing. He's had a very solid season. He's had a couple of errors here and there, but overall, it's been a pretty good season, and we all were expecting. 2017, all right, was a bit like okay, it was close between the two between the two championship rivals, Hamilton and, and Vettel, and then the second part of the season, Hamilton kind of took over that role. We had the, a similar sort of situation in 2018. The Mercedes car wasn't really as pace as what we thought it was going to be, but that Ferrari car was so good. And then we were thinking, right, we're going to have a really good close championship battle again between Mercedes and Ferrari, between Vettel and Hamilton. Yes, come on, let's go. Vettel bins it in Germany. Hamilton goes on to win the Grand Prix. And everyone just had it. Oh, no. No. Like they can't strike twice in the same place, can it? Unfortunately, it did. But in saying that, though, a lot of people are saying that Vettel hasn't recovered from that incident. But let's, let, let's not forget that two races later, he won in Belgium by a dominant margin he, he drove so so well that weekend um to the point of where like oh great we have definitely got a world championship battle on our on our heads here you know all right germany's long gone now belgium brilliant and then a monza he makes that silly silly mistake hitting hamilton and then it was never the same again in my opinion so i think in a way it has affected him sort of but i don't think that's the actual source of why sebastian vettel is doing so bad in formula one i think even before that um in 2017 the car was good but maybe i i always say that the 2017 title was lost by ferrari the 2018 title was lost by vettel but in previous years you know look at 2014 what a horrible horrible year that was his car was really unreliable and people are people are saying all right the car was slow the car was bad but his new teammate in ricardo won three races in 2015 was a redemption year there was no pressure on vettel whatsoever ferrari had a really bad 2014 2015 was like a right scrap that project let's do something new we've got two brand new drivers well one brand new driver rather came right in there in for another year let's go in let's see what we can do 
designed this brand new car, so so good, wins three races, um, and of course, um, Sebastian Vettel wins in the second round, and we're thinking, oh, the old Sebastian Vettel is back. But then in 2016, the, he did win a Grand Prix at all that season, and it, that's his second win this win in, two, in three years. And you're thinking, hang on a minute, this guy who's won in every single season, well, in every full season that he's been in, if you remember, pre-2014, pre, 20, uh, pre 2014, I mean, 2017 he raced, but that's not a full season before people start, you know, getting at me in the comments, that wasn't a full season. 08, 09, 10, 11, 12 and 13, he all won at least one race, 2014, nothing, 2015, three wins, 2016, no wins at all. And then 2017 was like a redemption year, Ferrari actually got the act together, they had a really good car. And nothing, no championship for Vettel. And again in 2018. Um, and since that incident, uh, he won in Belgium. He hasn't won a race since. The rest of 2018 was like just a Vettel spinning fest. Like, I don't know what was going on in Vettel's mind. He made some really stupid decisions. He was just wasn't on his game at all. Um, and then in 2019, we're thinking, right, that, well, in preseason testing, we were thinking again, Ferrari, that look, the car looks so good. But then the car like, at the start of the season wasn't as pace as what we thought it was going to be. But now all of a sudden, Leclerc is getting the best out of that car, and Vettel isn't, in a way. He's had four podiums this season. He's had, well, two third places and two second places. His last time out in um, in Britain was just a prime example of, of what's going, what, what is wrong with Sebastian Vettel. And I think, the, the, I think, yes, I think you could say in a way that it is Germany 2018, but I think the bigger overhaul, the bigger aspect of it, is he doesn't get the V6 era. He just, he just hasn't grasped it at all. And I'm not saying he's the only one. There's a number of drivers who haven't done that. But for a top driver, I mean, look at Hamilton. Look at how many you know different changes he's been through. He's always been at the top. Vettel was at the top in one era, and then in what in another era he wasn't. We have seen that before, where one where one team and car, uh, one team and driver, sorry, will be really good in one era. The rules and regulations change, and then all of a sudden they're, they're maybe in the midfield or at the back. Williams, for a prime example, you know, a couple of changes here and there. One minute they're really, really good, the next minute really, really bad. Then they're good, now they haven't been the same since. So, you know, and Williams started the, the V6 era in fine form, third place in two, uh, third place two years in a row. Um, the, the, just, you know, a slow decline since then. So I think Vettel hasn't really adapted to the V6s as well as some of the drivers have done, for example. Yeah. Bottas, hmm, Hamilton, definitely has adapted to that. In terms of what you were saying there before, Lab, about does Vettel need to win this weekend, I think the only way... I think to be, I think um, the only way that you're going to really get the best, well, the, get a really positive comment out of this, is only redemption. If Vettel wins the Grand Prix, he's only getting redemption. He's not in the championship fight. All Vettel, all Vettel is not back. You know, he's got a lot of work to do if he does want to win another championship. If he wants to, you know, win some more races this season. Like I said in the preview, I think Ferrari season will kick on after Belgium. I've got a funny, funny feeling that will happen. Uh, but then again, I did. I remember saying in 2015 that in the current Honda season will kick will kick off after Spain. Look how wrong I was then. But you never know. Um, so yeah, like yeah. So it's almost going to be like like Ricardo Monaco uh, situation when in 2016, you know, they had that tire problem. You uh, lost the Grand Prix from the lead. 2018, he won the Grand Prix. Brilliant. Uh, once again, I think Vettel might have that situation. It won't be a oh Vettel is back. Vettel's going to be the championship fight because if you, in a way, he kind of. He's got his foot in the door, if you want to put it mathematically. He's got it in the door. But people are writing off Leclerc and Verstappen. But they're, well, Verstappen's ahead of Vettel, and Leclerc's about three points behind him. So if you're writing Leclerc and Vettel off, uh, sorry, Leclerc and Verstappen off, surely you should be writing Vettel off. So therefore, Vettel's got no chance in the championship whatsoever, even if he does win this weekend. Because therefore, Mercedes have got to retire, you know, out for five, six races. And that's never going to happen, just guys. Means that, I think it just means like, um, that he, he's still got it. Because there's been a lot of mistakes from Sebastian. The problem with, with Sebastian, the, the problem with, with Vettel is, is that one weekend is really good. The next weekend, he's off the pace. Like well, yeah, like, 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 like the season, he's had two third place finishes. What, what was it in Monaco? In uh, sorry, uh, it was <clears throat> Azerbaijan and Spain. And then in, in, in his two second place was in Monaco and in Canada, controversially. Uh, Canada again yeah. was prime example. Canada was kind of yeah his fault in a way. People will disagree with that, but you know that's that, yeah. that's what that's what was awarded. But yeah, like yeah, that was like, that was half and half that one. Yeah, exactly. That was like, half and half. Like, but, but yeah, like, I mean, but Hamilton just, yeah, this like Hamilton this season, season, he's been there all the way through. Even in twenty seventeen, even in twenty sixteen, he was always there. And you could argue, yeah, all right, the the car was good, but Vettel, uh, the the Ferrari the Ferrari car in twenty seventeen was good. The Ferrari car in twenty eighteen was even better than the Mercedes, 
And Mercedes still beat them because Hamilton was always there at the top. Vettel is just up and down, up and down, up and down. And it's got us like us critics like on his back quite a bit. And I think, yeah, pretty much what I just said, it's it's just a bigger aspect of a bigger aspect of things. And yeah, if Vettel does win this weekend, it's not yeah right. Vettel's back in the championship fight. It's just it's just going to be a redemption from next season eh, for for last season. Sorry and. And yeah, and I think a lot of people might disagree with me on that. Some people might agree with me on that because Vettel, I don't think he, I don't think he will retire because of because of it, because of his form because of the, because of whatever reason. I can't say him retiring at all, um, despite what people throw in front of me. I can't say it happening whatsoever. But in a way, I think his form in himself will certainly be psychologically damaging, even though he might hide it in a way because Vettel's he's not on social media. We won't know his emotions. What he might be going through, what he's doing, how, what, how he how is he recovering from things? You know, we don't know what we don't know what he does. It, might, it could be hurting him a lot. It might, he might be going, eh, whatever. I've got before world championship. Who cares? Um, but you know, Vettel's got a lot of work to do if he wants to, let's say, as like I say, regain his reputation in uh, in Ferrari and probably gain a Formula One. You know, he says he doesn't want a legacy, but for us, we're saying, all right, right for part one of Vettel was good, very you know, legendary, if you like. Part two of Vettel. Mm, is Vettel really that good? Really? I think he's a good driver, but as like I said, I don't think I don't think he's, he's grasped the V six era. So Lyle, if he does win this weekend, what do you think that'll in your opinion anyways, do you think what 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 where do you where where would you stand with Sebastian Vettel? Do you think he would be right, yes, Vettel is back, Vettel can go on to win multiple races again this season and actually be on the on the same level as Hamilton, kind of? Or do you think it's just gonna be a uh, meh, he won a race, well done. So is Verstappen. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, like just what you were saying there about you know the the championship fight. Um, I don't think. I mean, this year, yeah. you know, he's yeah, he's completely out of it. Um, you know, he's, yeah, he's, definitely. He's actually under threat of you know being caught by Charles Leclerc, and he's been in under threat by being like we were saying. You know, when I was saying you quickly off air about it, I was saying that you know he's under threat of becoming like number two driver for next year. Um, but it, it's, yeah. it, I think it's just more about long term, Sebastian. Um, also, I just want to quickly add well, two things. I want to add. Firstly, if you are watching me sweat, oh my god, I'm so sorry. It's so hot. It's so <laughs> yeah, hot. It is very warm in the UK. I'm not gonna lie. I'm pleased you said that now. I'm pleased you said that. So the now towel, I can yeah. get this the towel out. out right. have a have a quick have a quick mi mi mid mid record dab. Jo yeah, literally, yeah. right? Let's have a look. <laughs> well, John, yeah, John said it's so, right. Yeah, the towels come Continue. Uh, but, but, but yes, and then also as well, just about yeah, Sebastian Vettel going forward. He's a fighting world champion. That you know, I, like I said in the preview show, I'm just going to go quickly back to it. You know, he might. Sh I don't want to say he shouldn't have gone to Ferrari, but like he hasn't really grasped Ferrari. You know, John said it's a V6 era that he hasn't really grasped. I want to say that he hasn't really grasped Ferrari, and I don't think he would do any better with Red Bull. But I just don't think he's really grasped the Ferrari concept. Um, yeah. You know, redemption, yes, yeah. is definitely there. I think it's also just thinking about his championship fight for next year. We look at Sebastian and we just think that, like, he's not consistent like Lewis. Lewis is just not making those errors. He never has been. He never, you know, when has Lewis ever made, really, errors like Sebastian has? And, and yeah, that, that's that's just about it, really. Um, I, I don't actually know why where Sebastian does these, where he gets his errors from, you know, is it feeling the pressure? Is it from what he's done? Either these mistakes, but as John just said there, you know, he won after he won in Belgium, you know, race after Germany. Definitely was a redemption. Yeah. Um and yeah, um I forgot what what was the, what sorry, what was the question again, John, that you asked us? Well I was basically I was basically saying that if Vettel does win this weekend in Germany, oh, yeah. <laughs> do you think that this will kick on his season, in your opinion. Do you think that um, he will well, start cool. winning races again? Yeah. Or do you think it's like, a, all right, he's won a Grand Prix, but Verstappen's won a Grand Prix as well. So yeah. Right, we're looking at yeah, yeah, we're looking at Charles Leclerc. He's had two poor positions and Vettel's had none. And we're looking at Max Verstappen, like you just said there. He's won a race and, 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 and mainly Sebastian hasn't. I think Charles Leclerc, we can kind of let him off the hook a bit because, you know, the car isn't there, but he definitely has poor positions. And they both have podiums. You know, <clears throat> Charles Leclerc and Max both have podiums. Sebastian has... Really nothing. And I'll tell you something as well I just want to go quickly back to. Like, I remember all the way back in pre-season, and again, like me and John were talking about this, we were saying that, you know, it's going to be the two Ferraris, the two Mercedes, two Ferraris, yeah, two Ferraris, two Mercedes, and then Verstappen, and then Gasly all the way at the back. So there's like, you know, there's five of them, five of the big hitters, five out of the six big hitters, and then Pierre Gasly on his own at the, at the back. Now, it's kind of like the two, for, uh, the two uh, Mercedes drivers, Charles Leclerc, and Max Verstappen, four of the big, four of the six hitters, and then Sebastian just yeah. a little bit ahead of Pierre Gasly because he is. I mean, Sebastian's P four, I think, in the championship, and Pierre's P six. 
with only Charles Leclerc be a twit between them. And obviously Seb would have been thinking, well, I've got 10 years of experience on Charles Leclerc. Uh, sorry, nine years of experience on Charles Leclerc. I've been in Formula 1 for 10 years. He would definitely have been thinking, there's no doubt that I will, should, will be leading him. But he's in the worry of letting him slip. Um, so in terms of what they've actually got this year, Charles is definitely ahead of him. If Seb wins this year, this weekend, it's definitely redemption. It definitely will be something good to see. Again, he will have won, won uh, at his home event. It'll be the second one, but technically the first... First, because I mean, even though Nurburg special, because it was the Formula One track of Nurburg, it was a bit controversial. Hockenheim was getting changed, and as I say, there, you know, Hockenheim is very close to where Sebastian actually uh, was born and, and grew up. So that would be a bit. Of, that would be a very sweet win for him. Um, it will change nothing in the World Championship. Um, but yes, John, as you know, we'd roll after Germany. We'd go on to Hungary, and we'd go into the second part of the season thinking, well, as I say, yeah, nothing's really changed. You know, Sebastian. Sebastian is back to normal, back to just normal Seb. Charles, Charles after, you know, hopefully a win to kind of make up for his two poles and no wins. And then Seb's back to fighting, clawing his way back to try and at least get to Charles Leclerc's level and hopefully higher. But nothing will really mm. change. It just might, might help him in the longer run because, like, you know, Sebastian Vettel, he's, 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 he's very much slipping down the order. You think that he did peak at Red Bull and he's been on a very, very fast descent. And it is getting close to Sebastian Vettel's end in the next few years, let's say. But we don't want to see you know anything like this happen where Seb just kind of falls off the map completely. Um, mm. I don't think it'll change much, but it'll hopefully help him in the fight just for the future to say that he is there. He still can help Ferrari. He can still deliver because he's getting podiums. He's doing a Raikkonen. And as you know, Raikkonen needed a win to help him. You know, five years on, he got a win. It was a bit late and he had decided to go back to Alfa Romeo. But it did help him. Yeah, so if Sebastian can get this win, it won't change much this season, but it will definitely help him in the long run. Just to show that he is, you know, still there. He's still with Raikkonen, you know, like like Raikkonen was supporting the team, that he can still do that. Um, but yeah, it won't change much this year. But it's mainly, just like what you said there, mainly it is just redemption. Um, it's to show that last year was just a really big fluke because, you know, even, it's, it's painful for me when I think about it, you know, just to think that what, what, what he did, you know, that, that little stupid error. And, and, and yeah, that little, you know, head held low, walking back to the paddock while Lewis Hamilton was winning. If anything, Lewis winning added more salt into the Sebastian Vettel wound as well. But even yeah. just crashing out, even if, let's say, you know, someone random like Marcus Ericsson won the race last year, it would still be really horrible for him. So it's redemption for Seb this year, uh, this win. It will, will definitely not affect the championship this year. It, it won't help anything this year. He'd probably go back to square one. But it'll just help him next year. I think that Ferrari will be like, oh well, Sebastian, he's you know he can still deliver for us because at the moment Charles is like two nil. You know, Charles has the qualifying two uh, pole positions, and Seb has absolutely nothing. It's kind of die for Sebastian Vettel really, and he doesn't want he, he, you know he can't afford to be kind of shown by 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 Charles Leclerc definitely. But um, yeah. but yeah, I think this should be a good weekend. I've said he will win, um, and then yeah. Um, I mean, how do you think Sebastian Vettel will get on this weekend in his home race? Do you think that, you know, a lot of pressure comes from that or no pressure? And and just, just kind of switch it from what we're thinking. Do you think that he's feeling the pressure? Do you think he needs to win this race? Or do you think he's kind of very cool and, and, and didn't talk about it? A bit like how in, Hung uh, in, in I don't know what the next race after Germany was last year. I think it was Hungary. Belgium. I, don't, I think Hungary was before that. But anyway, whatever the race was last year, after he didn't really talk about it afterwards. He kind of just like was like, this happened in Hockenheim. Let's move on. And do you think he'll be like this this year, or this weekend, or do you think he will be thinking about this in, in a very much redemption kind of way? Because it's great before I pass over, I was watching the circuit guide of Seb, and he or he made one comment about it in the Sax curve. He said something like, "Okay, you know, turn it into Sax curve." Not very good memories from last year, and I think that was the very only the one and only time I've ever heard Sebastian talk about that crash last year. So do you think it's on his mind, Jordan? Or do you think he'll just be treating this like any other weekend? I think he'll be treating it like like any other weekend. I think he'll want to like in Formula One. He can't really like you know, dwell on your mistakes, you can't like think it over and over again because you will continue to make those mistakes. And I think that's something you learn in in the cart and basically right, okay, you've crashed, get over it, sort yourself out and just move on to the next Grand Prix, and that's what Formula One drivers are mentally made to do. Not just Formula One drivers, but sports drivers. Uh, sports sports drivers, get out of here. <laughs> Bless you know, sports uh, sportsmen, sportsmen and women all over in tennis and football in in golf or anything like that. If you miss a penalty or if you miss an open goal or if you miss a pot in golf or if you hit if you miss hitting a ball in tennis, I don't know how you can't I don't know how you can do that, but never mind. I'm, I'm, <laughs> a, I'm no tennis player. Um, then tell, tennis it, tennis expert as John. Yeah, exactly. I'm a tennis expert. Yeah. Um, like you just go all right. Okay, forget about it. 
let's, let's relax, let's move on. Some people aren't like that, some people let them just, it just stays on their mind forever and they're never the same person, like what people are saying about Vettel. But I think for me, Vettel will just basically let this go off his mind. He will be asked about it. I haven't seen the press conference yet. I don't know if he's get, uh, uh, getting asked about it. I'll watch it after after we've uh, recorded here. But I've got a funny feeling he might. Like 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 uh, Lyle said, he mentioned it briefly um, when he was doing the circuit guy, which I thought, oh yeah, that's that that's all right. For you know, at least he's like he's comfortable to talk about it in a way. Yeah. Um, but he will definitely be asked about it. For sure, I think once he goes on the track in FP1, I think as soon as he as soon as he goes around that corner, David Croft will be, he'll say something about it, or Martin Brundle or whoever's alongside David Croft yeah. on that day. Well, at least he said it first. Yeah, if, exactly. If you yeah. don't let them laugh with you, they'll laugh at you. That's and I think that, and I think in a way that proves good. to me that Vettel's kind of like okay, like let's let's just get on about it. Like okay, yes, I know I've yeah. done wrong there, and. Yeah, he, he he will want to move on. He will definitely want to move on from that. He will want to have a really good weekend. His performance, um, um, I don't know. I don't really know if, if I'm totally honest because Seb isn't on the best of form, is he? Like I said, he got them two podiums uh, way way back when in uh, Monaco and in uh, I was going to say Azerbaijan there for a second uh, in Canada. Um, but since then, he hasn't been. This, he hasn't really been there or thereabouts. It's always been Charles Leclerc, hasn't it? He's been yeah. like Leclerc's been like the face of Ferrari, but not. But for me, right? I think what Lyle said. Like, I remember Lyle saying in the first part about the about for, uh, Leclerc being the number the number one driver. I think for me, in my opinion, as long as Vettel's there, Vettel will will always be the number one driver. That will always yeah. be in his contract. That that's something that all, that Vettel will always be at. And I think that yeah, you're right. He might be doing Leclerc might be doing better. But I think Vettel brings more experience, more knowledge about the car and about the about the team. Like like I think we said that you know a few weeks back. And I remember Massa's interview in Hungary 2010 after the um, uh, Fernando was faster than you. He said in the press that if I'm number two driver, I don't race anymore. And it's like okay, fair enough. And uh, so and obviously with I think Vettel will have the kind of like the same same attitude if I'm number two driver. I'm, I'm not here. What's the point? Yeah. And I think Leclerc would have signed that contract knowing he's going to be number two driver. And if he, and if he's outperforming Vettel, then therefore he's exceeding expectations because a lot of people would have been thinking that Vettel and Leclerc would have been behind Vettel all season long. Maybe one or two see one or two races that Leclerc would have might have been ahead of Vettel. But Leclerc's outpacing Vettel, in my opinion, at this present time, guys, he's faster than Sebastian Vettel. Uh, don't think too many two people can disagree with me on this. Maybe not overall, but maybe this season. I think Leclerc is getting the best out of that Ferrari car, better than better yeah. than Sebastian than, than, than Vettel is. Um, and but for me, yeah, Vettel will always be the number one driver as long as he's, as long as he is at uh, Ferrari. Like it was clear to see that uh, it uh, when when Kim Reitman was his teammate, he would always move out the way. Um, for for Seb, he would always you know give up his, his positions for for the team. Okay, don't battle Seb. Okay, Kimmy, come in for your pit now. It would it would always be Kimmy would sacrifice himself for Vettel. Yeah, I can't see that. I can't see them doing that for the clerk. I, well, I think they will. They have done before a couple of times this season, haven't they? When especially at the start, when the clerk was just left out the dry in strategy, like Vettel got his pits up and the clerk was like, uh, guys, I've got ties too. I'm part of the team. Like, hello. Well, if like, my ties are coming so off. I'll, I'll, I'm just pointing something out. If um, so, l this time last year was the very, very, very famous Valtteri. It's <laughs> I guess <laughs> Valtteri. It's James. Oh, honestly, man, Valtteri it wasn't James. funny then, but it's quite funny. I know now. it was a big Valtteri overkill. <laughs> oh, I mean, at the that time, was it was famous. massively overkill. Valtteri. It's James. That was like, a, that was a funny. It's James. Once, brilliant. John, I was so what was it? It was something like there was just a meme, and it was like Valtteri. It's James, and then it was. Like bot ass going mad at him. He's I like, remember one time, right? Just quickly, I, 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 I did chuckle at that the first time. Then I seen Lord times and I got, I got a bit bored of it. But then I did <laughs> chuckle at the other one where it said James is Valtteri. I just, I don't know why. I just started laughing at that one where it was, it was a picture of Valtteri. I think it was at Australia when he won. It just said Val, uh, James is Valtteri. I've won or something. I just, I started crack, I started cracking at that one. But that was pointless anyway. Forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, James is Valtteri. Right. Yeah, but anyway, anyway. God, anyway, Charles back out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, oh, um, that, was the, that, that was the scene. I'm back. That was the scene of the of the, of the famous Valerie. It's it's with it. Val, yes, Valerie. Yes, Valerie's no, it's not James. Man. That's right. No, James. Yeah. James is Val, James Valerie. Um, <laughs> that was the scene of the very famous Valerie. It's James, and you know he said whole position when they got basically they got Lewis Hamilton strategy right. He was at first, but Valerie was faster 
on the uh, behind. I think so, so. I think Lewis was on the dry tire. Valtteri was on the wets, and just he had more pace. And that's when James came on and said, you know, hold position. Yeah. And that's what you meant about uh, you know sacrificing and that. And of course, yeah, Kimi did that for for, for Seb. Charles hasn't done that for Seb. But also, I wanted to also point out that what you said about um, you know Sebastian being number one driver and Charles being number two driver. So if we compare that to Alfa Romeo, Kimi Raikkonen, he gets a lot more out of the car than Antonio Giovinazzi. And we just look at that and think, well, you know, Kimi Raikkonen's more experienced, but, yeah, Kimi just gets more out of the car. But when you're a four-time world champion and you have over 10 years of experience and you're getting shown up by, and, sorry, and you're getting outperformed by a 21-year-old, younger than me, and Jordan, driver, who this is his debut season at Ferrari, two pole positions compared to no pole positions, it's not really... He's getting more out of the car, is it, Jordan? It's he's showing Sebastian Vettel up, and yeah, I just like that. That's what it is, really. I think there's no teammate, there's no driver in Formula One who's really in a position like Sebastian Vettel is yet, because you know Pierre Gasly. It, the only one I could compare it to is if Pierre Gasly started outperforming Verstappen, and Verstappen was like, right, okay, well, I'm still young, but I'm so much better than him, and then Verstappen would be like, oh boy, this, you know, I'm not very good. But That's Sebastian, but Sebastian Vettel is no stranger to this, if you remember. I mean, flash your mind back to 2014. It was outshone by Ricardo. He was. Yeah, was, 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 for me. was Ricardo was the number one driver then? Yeah. Not a chance. That, no. that would have been... <laughs> Bye. But, but in that sense, Jordan, remember, Sebastian kicked his toys out of the pram. He did. And then moved ship to Ferrari. And he's coming to Mercedes. No, he's going back to Red Bull, guys. He's going back to Red Bull. Bull. I was going to say, this, <laughs> this, the is his first, this is his first year since 2015 that he will be outscored by Kimi Raikkonen. I don't know about 2016 because they both got zero wins. I don't know how it worked out in the permutations. Don't count me on that. But it's the first year that really, yeah, he's feeling the pressure, let's say. He's feeling the pressure of another teammate. So, yes, I mean, he probably won't jump ship like he did in 2014. But, yes, it's, it's, it's not really that Charles Leclerc is getting more out of the car. It's that Sebastian Vettel is getting shown up. And that's the main thing. And to be honest, I think there's nobody else like in Formula 1 like him. If Valtteri started beating Lewis, fair enough. He'd been a five world champion. But we know that he ha- Valtteri has a lot more experience. And he has, I think he's got six race wins, five or six race wins now over his career. He's been in two different teams. Um, he got pole position in his very first year as well. Or sorry, his second year alongside Felipe Massa at Austria, 2014. That, but that still wouldn't be as embarrassing as, as I say, yeah, 20 year old, you want driver, younger than me and Jordan, showing off Sebastian Vettel, which he is. So it's very much different, I'd say, to getting the most out of the car. So he needs to kind of put his foot down, a bit like how you would with a kid, and say, I'm now here. I am the number one driver. And yeah. But the thing is, though, Sebastian will not want a piece of paper. He will not want um, uh, Maria, uh, what's he called? Uh, Bernardo to, um, Bernardo, you know, yeah. say, you're the number one driver, you're not, you're not as good as Shaw, but you know, don't worry, we have it in your contract to keep you happy. He will not want that. He needs to really outshone Charles Leclerc. And they're very similar, they're very close in the World Championship standings. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, Jordan, when you were saying about, you know, what his bigger goal for this year, I think that a race win is out of the championship, but mainly, and to be honest, the thing that he could probably put at the top of his list is to beat Charles Leclerc. Absolutely. And to show that he is number one driver, not only for what is stated on his contract and because of his experience and just because he's like, you know, the, the happy-go-lucky German guy who gets really unlucky me yeah. or laugh at. Yeah. But the number one driver because he deserves to be there, because he has beaten his teammate, because like he did with Kimi Raikkonen, like he did with Mark Webber at Red Bull, because there was no worry there, you know, if he was the number one driver. He beat Mark Webber fair and square. And the Aussie Grit was a great driver, uh, yeah. as you were about to find out in the next few months. Um, so there's no doubt in the, in the previous few years that he's been with, but this year could be really his worst year, John, even worse than 2014, yeah. even though I mean, Charles not win, won yet. Yeah. But it could be. And that's why I think the big thing that he's got to do is to be Charles Leclerc. That's my, Absolutely. I mean, what, what do you think his goal is for this season? Wins here and there? What is it? What would you say he's going for for the end of 2019? Definitely beat Charles Leclerc without a shadow of a doubt because if he gets beaten by another teammate again, a younger teammate rather than his debut season for that particular team, then you're in trouble, mate, I'm afraid. And I don't think we should really say that Vettel is a bad driver. He's doing this, he's doing that because, and that's why Leclerc is so close to him. Leclerc is a very good driver and he's very, very quick. Let's not forget that. He's been outscoring Vettel the majority of this season. He's been very consistent. A lot of people have been like, I don't want to jump on the bandwagon with Leclerc, but I kind of like him in a way. Like Some people are on the bandwagon, so people avoid it with all costs. Some people are like, do I get on, do I get off? I don't know what to do. Um, but for me, without a shadow of a doubt, Leclerc is outperforming Vettel. He's doing so much better. Not, and not because Vettel's doing so bad, it's because Leclerc is doing so good, in my opinion. And I think if Vettel was... 
a bit better than I think it would be. Uh, then he could say, right, okay, maybe it's it's all that experience or anything like that. But for me, I think Vettel, to be fair, he's had really no mechanical issues at all. Leclerc has won. Let's not forget. Let's not let's not talk about that one again. Um, but of but you know like the the car's been more or less fine. It's been outpaced, yeah. But so like Leclerc hasn't exactly been able to catch the leading pack either, apart from in Austria. Um, in Bahrain, of course, when 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 the temperatures were really really hot, um, and so like, Leclerc's getting the best out of that car, and, and Vettel isn't. So Lyle, just to f- pretty much finish on right, if yep. Leclerc finishes ahead of Vettel in the championship standings, would you credit Leclerc for a fin- for beating a five a four time world champion, or would you say it, uh, Leclerc, uh, Leclerc finished ahead of Vettel because Vettel had a really bad season? Would you, which where on the on the uh, Swing? Would you? Where would you go on the side of the scale? Would you go? Would you go? Leclerc was he had a brilliant season, or would you say Vettel ha- had a bad season? Yeah. Um, well, firstly, I mean Sebastian Vettel. Like, if he was having breakdown, if he was having mechanicals, then of course I would blame the car. Absolutely. But he hasn't yet, and Leclerc's no. actually had, you know, well, more of a detrimental one, like you just said there in Bahrain. Yeah, he did. Um, so no, if 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 the season continues, Ferrari finishing the races and. The strategy's holding up, you know. The pit stops have got better, you know. The strategies, the strategists have really, you know, they've got better this year. Uh, still not as good as Mercedes, man, but they're better. Yeah. Um, no, I, I would totally give Leclerc much more credit, and I would say that is incredible. You are the driver of the year if you beat Sebastian Vettel, and if Seb gets beat by Sh- uh, Charles, to say if Seb gets beat by Seb, if Seb gets beat by <laughs> Charles, then if Seb beats Vettel, um, if if Seb, if Seb beats Vettel, then. I'll look at Seb and I'll think, right, okay, you've been beaten by a teammate, which is, he's better than you. So, you know, I don't feel, like, bad for you anymore. I feel like you've deserved to lose because Charles better. But, Charles better. A 21-year-old guy, debut season in Formula 1. Um, you know, he's had mishaps at the start of the year. Like, Barium was, you know, was it the second race of the year? Second race of the year. Yeah. You know, he had heartbreak then. He was the youngest driver to hit Ferrari. It's only like 40 years. All these things are stacked against him. And if Seb gets beaten by him, fair enough, you were beating Seb. But by somebody who, like, I mean, come on, you should have really walked this season with him. You really should have taken him for a ride. And you just, a little bit, it's very much very much like Ricardo as well. Very much like Ricardo. Because Ricardo, straight from Toro Rosso, was one, one or two seasons with Toro Rosso. Young gun. I think, um, I think we all said like this. Leclerc, I think we all mentioned um, the 2014 season when we yeah. knew uh, Leclerc was going to be partnering in Vettel. We, all, we were all like... Let's not forget 2014. Let's not forget that one. And Daniel Ricciardo, he had an amazing... I think that definitely elevated him. If Charles can beat him, you never know, it might elevate him as well. But no, I mean, John, what do you think? Quickly, Wendon, what do you think? Do you think we'll praise Charles or have a go at Seb or both? Or what do you think will happen? I would probably say more towards Leclerc having a really good season because, like, yeah, like, it's not... The thing is, though, right, people think that, all right, Vettel's, you know... But is being bad because he's 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 lack, lack of concentration or, or or this or that or whatever or Hamilton's winning because you know he's got the best car. It isn't easy to drive a Formula One car. Let's not forget that. And then all these guys no. have been training all their lives. It still isn't easy. It is still quite tough to drive a Formula One car. And for Leclerc to come into Ferrari, a team that it's almost like is going from Al- uh, he went from Sauber when we call last season. It was almost like being at a Weatherspoons, right? You're at, you're at Weatherspoons, you're in your casual clothes, with your mates, a couple of pints, you know, mixed grill right in front of you and you're just eating the weight <laughs> life. Going to Ferrari, Very it's British. like it's like going to like a Michelin star restaurant, suited and booted. Oh, don't, I just, you know, watch what you say. You know, you got your little, <laughs> I don't know what, they're eating posh restaurants, I don't know, the tiny bit of meat like that, and like I have two chips for like £10,000 or whatever it is. You know wow. that that's Ferrari, and you, you know you've got to like adapt to them surroundings. You can't make yourself like you know obvious that you're that you're an outsider if you like. Like you got to like okay, let's all right. This is my surroundings now. I've got to adapt to what how people do, what how people talk, you know, and how you know how people eat the food if you like. And for me, Leclerc is eating his food perfectly, spot on. <laughs> He's uh, getting Vettel... the taxi. He's already at the taxi. <laughs> exactly. Uh, rounds rounds on the clerk. Vettel. He's been a bit sloppy. He's been he's. Chewing his food like that, he's spitting all over. It's like Seb, man, come on! Like we're in the we're in the we're, but, but we're, then we're in front of Rolly back, here. But, his, but then, but then the reason why? So Charles will be sitting there. He's got his napkin little. <laughs> he's, thinking, well, he's thinking, Sebastian, what are you doing, man? Why have you ordered Vin- Why have you ordered tomato ketchup for your chips, man? I mean, what's going on? And then Seb will turn to me and he'll just go, Charles, come here, Charles, Charles. I've been here before. I know what I'm doing, and that's exactly 
Well, I finished that for you because I knew exactly what that was going to. Yeah. Charles will be on his best behaviour because Seb will be like, I've done this all before, and I think that's a great way to end up. Yes. Um, because it's been a very hard time for us sitting here in all this heat. It is very, I mean, very look much at that. watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed what you've seen around here, please like and subscribe. Um, we've just surpassed 700 uh, subscribers. Thank you very much to everyone yes, who has subscribed out there. So um, please leave in the, com in the comment section below what you think about all of this. Sebastian, where is he? Is he going to win tomorrow? And what is your standing on the on the Veltmeister? Um, and this, yes, as the end of the episode, um, please go and check out our preview, which came out the other day, and obviously the review show, which um, Jordan will be doing tomorrow after the race in Hockenheim. And uh, yes, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Thanks, guys. And once again, thank you very much for 700 subscribers. Let's let's get to a thousand very very soon. Yeah, we'll see you later.